actually wrote down on a piece of paper what quests I want to focus on because it wasn't a disaster last stream, but I felt like it was difficult to jump back and forth between playing and talking to chat and checking the journal and trying to see which systems I needed to go to, so I've written that down. Oh no, it's Conrad. Commander, I've been waiting for you to get back. What do you want, Conrad? I've got an idea and I wanted to run it by you. Conrad. I got a lot going on right now, but I can spare a moment. Great! This will just take a minute. With so many human colonies being attacked, I'm not sure that one specter is enough. What if you signed me on as another specter? I mean, first of all, no. <laughs> That's a terrible idea. Absolutely awful idea. But second of all, I'm not like the only specter, Conrad. I'm the only human specter. There's a bunch of us. Anyway, no. Conrad, I don't think that's a good idea. But I'd make a great specter. I'd be right there with you, showing the council what humanity is capable of. I know you're afraid to trust people after losing your team at Akuz, but I'd never let you down. Uh, just hitting on the trauma is like an excuse. It's not really endearing me to you or like even if that was the slightest smallest possibility which it's not but even if it was like going straight for the the trauma angle that's not doing what you think it's doing my guy what about your wife conrad she trusts you too aren't you letting her down what i, I don't understand you're simping for commander shepherd dude and you're married that's what's going on you know what keeps me going out here Knowing that people back home are keeping humanity strong. You... You're right. I just got so caught up in all of it. I wanted to help. I'll go home. Thanks for setting me straight. Okay, good. Jeez. Yes, here we go, this office. Oh, are they arguing? What's going on? I heard what happened under the Artemis Tau Cluster. The Council wasn't too happy about the destruction of those Prothean ruins. Oh yes, that. This isn't a game, Ambassador. Shepard's out there trying to stop Saren from destroying the galaxy. I know, I know. Just try to be a little more careful. The Council's watching you, and we all get judged on how you behave. <laughs> okay, so I just came here to get yelled at by Udina. That's fine. I don't really care about Udina's opinion, so that's... That's fine. I don't care. <laughs> yes, Commander. Okay, great. I've been raised to see Krogan as bloodthirsty thugs, but you've surprised me, Rex. You are different. The genophage is a lot easier to swallow when all Krogan are savage monsters, isn't it? Why don't you head back to the Normandy, kid? If you stay here in the real world, you might have to learn something. You see, he's learning. He's he's getting it. Eventually he'll realize that government education and propaganda was kind of not entirely accurate. Rex woke up today and chose violence. That was Rex being nice. Rex is just really old and he's really tired of having to deal with mis Mr. 24 years old, never been off paladin. Ugh. Never been of Pelavin or the Citadel, having opinions about his species that have been ingrained in him by his, I guess you call it a government. Rex is the best. Rex is really cool. I get, like, there's about, I keep saying, oh, the, he's like one of my favorite characters, but I feel like I say that for the majority of characters in this game. Even NPCs, where I'm like, oh, he's one of my favorite characters. <laughs> Message for you, Commander. Oh. Just came in over a secure channel. Shepard, this is Admiral Kahoku. I found out who set that trap for my men. The ones killed by the Thresher Moor. Damn, I hope you get this message. It was a group called Cerberus. An Alliance Black Ops organization. Top secret, highest level security clearance. They vanished a few months ago. Dropped right off the grid. Nobody knew where they went or what they were up to. They've gone completely rogue, Shepard. They're conducting illegal genetic experiments, trying to create some kind of super soldier. 
I don't have any proof, but I found the coordinates for one of their research worlds. I'm uploading them with this message. They're completely out of control. Somebody needs to stop them. I've done my part. Now it's up to you. This is... This is probably the last you'll hear from me. Cerberus is after me now. I need to disappear before they find me. Okay, we're gonna have to deal with that. And that was our first taste of Cerberus, who will become more important as the series goes on. They're basically... They were part of the Alliance, as like he said, a, a Black Ops group, and they've just... They've just run off and done their own thing. A uh, standard hydrogen helium gas giant, Farcrothu is only distinguished by its moon. Several dozen of them have been sculpted into the likeness of an anthropodal alien race not yet known to s council science. Radiometric dating suggests the moons were worked over half a million years ago. Interesting. So it just has these giant statues orbiting around it. Okay. Oh, level 2 cold hazard, okay. Mavagon is a small rock and ice planet with a thin atmosphere of ammonia and methane. The surface is frozen and mainly composed of thin of tin with deposits of potassium. The planet has a rudimentary ammonia-based life, mainly concentrated around geothermal vents deep underground. Severe storm cycles are common due to limited visibility. Navigation may be difficult. Okay, fantastic. Minus 124 degrees Celsius. Ammonia methane atmosphere is the single most dangerous thing I've heard all week. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Whee! Oh, it's probably over here. Let me just do that. No? Okay. Okay, let's do... I'll just run up to him. It's fine. There we go. Second crime lawn defeated. That's both of them. No doubt Helena Blake will be overjoyed to learn that these two scum are no longer a problem. There we go. Good job, everyone. All targets down. Commander, oh. urgent message from Alliance Command coming in. Urgent? I'll patch it through. Shepard, this is Admiral Hackett from Alliance Command. We've got a situation here and you're the only one that can handle it. Okay, that's... that's ominous. What do you need, Admiral? There's an Alliance training ground where we test weapons and technology and live fire simulations. One of the VIs we use to simulate enemy tactics in the drills is no longer responding to our override commands. It's gone rogue. Are you telling me this computer is thinking on its own? We're not stupid, Shepard. This is a virtual intelligence, not a true AI. It's not self-aware and it can't access any external systems. We didn't do anything illegal here. Virtual intelligence support is critical to our military success. VIs process thousands of status reports and react in nanoseconds. No human can do that. We need you to fight your way through the training ground of the VI core and manually disable it. Can't you disable it remotely? Our fail safes aren't responding. The VI operates on a closed network. It can affect any external systems, but we don't have any direct access to its processes. We could bomb it from orbit, but the damage to the facility would be catastrophic. We'd prefer to have someone shut down the core. Someone like you. I know Spectre's answered the Council, but you're still human. You're still part of the Alliance military, and right now we need you. The VI controls all the facilities, weapons, drones, and automated defenses. You're the only one that can pull this off, Shepard. Good luck. Okay, um, we'll check that as well. Let's do one thing at a time. Yeah, nuke the whole damn place from orbit, it's the only way to be sure. That quote is in my head every single time any character in this game says, Oh, blast it from orbit, blow it up from orbit. Yeah, let's go commit some crime! Not sure how Hackett will write that down in his paperwork, but that's not my problem. Commander Shepard doing this to be very brave and very noble. Yes, we're getting rid of some horrible crime bosses. The fact that we were contracted by another crime boss isn't entirely relevant. It's the thought that counts. There she is. Hello again, Commander Shepard. I owe you a debt of gratitude. 
With my former partners dead, this syndicate is now mine. I could not have done it without you. I'm not done yet. Um, you're welcome, lady with a sniper rifle on her back. Those men deserve to die. Now are we gonna have a problem? Not if I can help it, Commander. I hope you can see that I am by far a lesser evil than those men. Under my leadership, this organization will restrict itself to gambling and smuggling illegal technologies. There will be no drugs and no slave-taking for the Batarians. Those days are over. I mean, it is a lesser crime, but if I can, if I can dismantle three crime bosses in one, I'm going to try and do that. This gang has a reputation for drugs and slaving. It's too late to change that. Perhaps you're right. Perhaps this organization has been so tainted by those two idiots that it cannot be redeemed. If I disband the gang, I walk away freely. I have not come so far to be arrested. I would die before going to prison. I would most certainly kill before going to prison. Now, do we have a deal? Yeah, sure. I don't particularly want to shoot her. I know she's a crime boss, but as far as crime bosses go, she has been exceptionally reasonable. You're free to go. I don't ever want to see this gang again. If I do... You won't. I'm not so foolish as to break my word to a Spectre. Now, if you'll excuse me, my men become nervous in the presence of law enforcement agents. Goodbye, Shepard. Helena bows gracefully and withdraws as her men escort you out. It's doubtful you'll see her again. And they just kick me out. <laughs> so if there were anything to collect in that base, I am not getting it because she kicked me out and said, get the hell off my planet. Somebody on Tumblr said that Commander Shepard once played Skyrim and she felt a spiritual connection to the Skyrim horse. It's very funny, after the first game they actually made the fact that Commander Shepard can't drive for shit part of her character. Like, other characters will remark on the fact that Shepard is a terrible driver. Celebrations are being planned oh, here we go. the anniversary of the end of the Rachni Wars. Many council worlds, particularly Asari and Solarian colonies, will hold victory parades to commemorate the defeat of the invading Rachni. In a rare admission of debt, several Asari colonies have invited Krogans to be honored for the victories the uplifted Krogans made possible. So, tell me what you guys think about that, because my issue is they, they make it a point to mention, oh, the uplifted Krogan. They don't just say, oh, they, they're commemorating the Krogan for making the victory in the war possible. They specifically take the time to point out the uplifted Krogan. And I can't decide whether I'm reading too much into it or if that is a bit of a microaggression. Where it's like, oh yeah, well, the Krogan are the reason why. Oh, wait, no, we, we need to be in C-Sect. But the only reason the Krogan were able to help us is because we uplifted them. But I can't decide if I'm just reading too much into it or if there is weird intent there you think it's a step in the right direction i mean it's not a lot and don't get me wrong it's weird but it's something i guess so considering how they treat the krogan in every other aspect i suppose it's a step oops i suppose it's a step in the right direction even if it's not the best step in the right direction actually let's walk to the presidium again just in case i miss any elevator dialogue so tell me Who'd win in a fight between you and Shepard? That question smacks of impertinence. Commander Shepard is a specter with a distinguished service record. So was Saren. Think about it. So you don't think you could... You don't think you could beat me up, Garrus? Is that what you're saying? I appreciate the confidence, but I'm pretty sure you could beat me up if you tried. You're like... Three to four inches taller than I am. And you're made of metal. I think if Garrus tried to punch me, he would break my jaw. Shepard would win with that attitude? True. Garrus also comes from a hyper-militant um, species. Yeah. I think he was fine uh, in military training. I don't think he did badly in it. I think he was okay with that. 
In a further development in the Eden Prime investigation, the Council has reportedly revoked the Spectre status of one of its operatives. While the unnamed operative has not yet been apprehended, a Council spokesman confirmed that corrective actions had been taken. We'd beat up each other? Yeah. Like I said, I'm pretty sure if Garrus tried to punch Shepard, he'd break her jaw just because he's got so much metal in him. But, on the other hand, Garrus is such a nerd, he would probably hesitate trying to do that. And that would be Shepard's in to take him down. Have increases in Citadel traffic endangered our safety? Emily Wong offers an inside look at the dangerous world of space traffic control. Oh good, she got her report in. I'm glad for her. Also, I'm glad for the traffic, uh, traffic, what are they? I want to say traffic reporters, but that's not correct. The traffic agents who deal with, with the traffic coming in and out of the Citadel because they need to form a union or bring on more people. A missing survey team in Hades. Oh, and we have to help Rex. Rex asked us to help get his family's armor from a really shitty Turian who collects like war memorial pieces from the Krogan rebellions because he's just an asshole basically. And Garrus asked us to help track down a not quite serial killer, a doctor who was selling illegal organs that he was growing inside of people. And Garrus had a massive problem with that guy getting away. Let's do some scanning of um, the local planets because these actually give some interesting lore regarding the setting. Pluto. Pluto is one of Sol's numerous ice dwarf worlds. It is mainly of note for being the gravitational anchor for the Prothean mass relay to Arcturus. Pluto and the... is it Karen or Sharon? I think it's actually Karen. I always say Sharon, but I, I think it's actually Karen. Pluto and the Karen relay, formerly encased in ice and considered a moon, orbit each other. Pluto's orbit was circularized in 2157 as a side effect of the Sharon mass relay recovery operations. And population, the gateway stations, 9,300 people. Excellent. So yeah, the mass relay system for Earth is actually the moon Karen. I think it just says it's a helium giant. Though Neptune, like Uranus, has plenty heli plentiful helium, its remoteness made it an unpromising target for mining before development of mass effect drive. With Uranus cheaper to exploit, it has never seen extensive development. The only permanent human presence is a small research facility on Triton, with a population of 70 people. After the development of Mass Effect FTL Drive, distant Uranus was the target for a land rush to exploit its combination of plentiful helium-3 fuel and shallow for a gas giant gravity well. Today Uranus is the largest producer of helium-3 in a line space, with a population of 371,000. Saturn has been a major source of helium-3 fuel for fusion plants since the 51, uh, 2150s. The moon of Titan is mined for hydrocarbons and used as a hostile environment training facility for Alliance Marines. Populations, orbitals and Titan 117,000. Jupiter's deep, deep gravity well and lethal radiation have kept its moons from being significantly exploited. The largest outpost is Binary Helix Corporation's Nautilus facility, attached to the underside of Europa's ice sheet. Population, all moons, 9,100. Um, Binary Helix, they're the guys who helped develop the Metagel, if I remember correctly. Mars. Once considered a prospect for terraforming and colonization, the discovery of faster-than-light travel turned Mars into a quiet backwater. Its southern pole is a historical preserve centered on the Prothean ruins found there. Immigration and development are restricted as the search for Prothean artifacts continues. Colony founded 2103, population 3.4 million. For detailed information, please refer to the standard issue Alliance Galactic Codex. Earth orbit is riddled with debris generated by bootstrap space development. Use of kinetic barriers is recommended at altitudes over 85 kilometers. Okay, so they don't actually say that much. Population 11.4 billion. Population on L4 and L5 stations 250,000. So Earth just has like a cloud of garbage. 
Okay, we need to go to Luna so that we can uh, deal with the VI, but let's just finish off here. With its molten temperatures, sulfuric acid clouds, and crashing carbon dioxide atmosphere, Venus has only a handful of aerostats research outposts. Population 800. A handful of solar-powered stations exist on peaks of eternal light at the north and south poles of Mercury. The difficulties imposed by the planet's proximity to the Sun and high orbital velocity have limited development. Population 340. 430 degrees Celsius temperature though. Okay, Luna. An early resource of Helium-3, Luna is now ma mined for materials used in space ha habitat construction. Two dozen major stations have been constructed at Earth's L4 and L5 Lagrange, Lagrange points, all from lunar resources. Colony founded 2069, population 4.1 million, capital city is named Armstrong. And I found that very sweet. It's backwater with that many people? Yeah. <laughs> you think someone makes TikToks of their daily life on the Sharon Mass Relay? Because I can totally see that happening. I bet... If TikTok was a thing in the Mass Effect universe, it would probably want to be one of the most entertaining apps. But I also think it would be a giant disaster considering the problem that Mass Effect's universe in general has with various levels of racism. I cannot imagine some of the hot takes that exists on the Mass Effect TikTok. There's Earth! Yay! Um, I don't think it matters which one we start with. We'll start with this one. You're afraid to see Mass Effect TikTok. I'm morbidly curious to see Mass Effect 4chan. <laughs> um, I think Mass Effect 4chan might actually exist. Nukes would solve this easily. Nukes solve everything. Actually, um, Hackett said they didn't want to do that because they didn't want to damage the facility. That was an option, but they didn't want to break anything. So they sent in Shepard. Because, because that makes sense. Open this. Oh, that, that's great. That's fantastic. Ah. Look at them. Look at them. A burst of white noise over all frequencies nearly de deafens you. Your hard suit's heads up display interprets it into a series of zeros and ones. And there's some binary. They repeat again and again, blanketing all frequencies until the lights on the final VI cluster flicker and die. Specialization class achieved. So I once used an online translator to find out what the binary says. That's just repeating on our um, heads up display. That binary translates into the word help. So that's fun. I think we're good, Shepard. I always like when I have to destroy some technology and my final shot has it screaming for help. That's, that always makes me feel very good. Sad binary. <laughs> it's sad. I don't like it. Canrum is a small rocky world with trace atmosphere of methane and krypton. Its surface is mainly composed of magnesium and, and silicates with deposits of carbon. Canrum was the site of the warlord Shiagur's defeat by Turian peacekeeping forces during the Krogan rebellions. While this band was not especially powerful, Shiagur was a female warlord and one of the few remaining fertile females at that. She had, through viciousness and cunning, parlayed her unique value into a position of power. Krogan males competed for the right to join her band and lie with her. When Shiagur's death was announced, vengeful male Krogan admirers near and far swore blood oaths against the participating Turian crews. In the end, several thousands of the Turian participants were killed in open combat or through assassination. To this day, many Krogan proudly proclaim that they have the blood of Shiagur. Oh, we got Turian insignias. 
Scans of the planet Kynram reveal dangerous levels of radiation coming from orbit. Chief Engineer, Engineer Adams conducted further scans and discovered the remains of an ancient warhead marked with the Parthia colony insignia. Vebenok is a small terrestrial world with a thin atmosphere of krypton and xenon. Its frozen surface is mainly composed of carbonaceous material, water, ice, and low-density silicates. Rare but concentrated loads of light metal have been deposited by asteroid impacts. One hemisphere of Vebenok is covered by surface deposits of oxidized copper. Approximately 270 years ago, a Turian bulk gas transport was attacked by pirates in the Phoenix system. Damaged, it made a rough landing on Vebenok. The heat of the landing melted significant quantities of surface ice and ruptured shipping containers spilled aloe X across the surface. Before this evaporated and escaped Vebenok's weak gravity, it reacted to cause the widespread rust. So because one ship crashed on this planet, they have basically caused the entire planet to rust. Good job, guys. Tuntau is an enormous low-density terrestrial planet with a thick atmosphere of methane and helium. Despite being nearly 20 AU from Phoenix, the star's great heat and the insulating thickness of the atmosphere make the surface surprisingly temperate. The crust is mainly composed of sodium and silicon dioxide with deposits of various light metals. While Tuan Tao is not habitable, the relative pleasantness of the surface conditions make it a popular location for small ships traveling through the Argus Road cluster to land for drive just discharge. And it is a surface temperature of 21 Celsius. I think this is where we need to go. This is the place. My armor's here somewhere. Okay, excellent. Ah. Oh, come on, that wasn't fair. Oh well. Try that again. The AI in this game is very confusing to me. Just the first one, because they fixed it in the other games. I don't understand why the enemies rush you. And I don't understand why they sometimes camp and don't do anything. It's very strange to me. This is it. I can't believe my ancestors ever wore this piece of crap. But at least I've got it back. That's great, Rex. I'm glad we could help you get it back. I might just be starting to like you, Shepard. Rex touches his grandfather's armor. His expression... thoughtful, perhaps? Krogan are hard to read. Then he shakes off his bemusement and grips his gun with renewed purpose. Time to move on. Yay, so we can help Rex. Okay, it's just... It has nearly 100 moons. It's really the only interesting thing there. Okay, MSV... Fi how do you say that? Fidel? The Fidel is a... Kowloon, Kowloon class modular conveyor of human design. In addition to the standard cargo bay, the hull has several biological research modules attached. Registry, private own owner, Dr. R. Hart. Because I was wondering what enemies would be on his ship, but I think, yeah. Test subjects, that's what. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Thank you for saving me from those things. Uh-huh. Commander, that's him. That's Dr. Salion. What? My name is Hart. Dr. Hart. Please, get me out of here. <sighs> Forgive me, but I wouldn't say that Hart is a traditional Salarian name. Now, I don't know much about Salarians, but that's no Salarian name I've ever heard. Are you sure it's him? Positive. There's no escape this time, Doctor. I'd harvest your organs first, but we don't have the time. Yeah, calm down, Garrison. He's crazy. He's crazy! Please, don't let him do this to me. Calm down, Garrus. We'll take him in, drop him off with the military. But we have him. We can't let him get away. Not again. So you just want to shoot him in the head right here, Garrus? No! If he dies, we'll never know what he's been up to, or how he did it. We'll take him in, interrogate him, and he'll serve his time. 
I... Okay. You're right. You're a very lucky Salarian. You owe the Commander your life. Oh, thank you so very much. And then he starts shooting at you. <laughs> and so he dies anyway. What was the point of that? You can't predict how people will act, Garrus. But you can control how you'll respond. In the end, that's what really matters. Yeah. I don't think I ever met anyone like you, Commander. Well, I guess we're done here. Salen's medical equipment is stained with the blood of many species. Pale blue, violet, orange, and more than a few dark red. But his work has ended here. Time to head back to the Normandy. Yeah, I don't know why they have him run first. Because um, when I was watching Dana play this the first time, she was very confused as to why Liara and Garrus just opened fire on him. And it's because he actually opens fire first. But they want him to round the station and take cover behind it first. But as a result, it kind of looks like Liara and Garrus just start shooting at him for no reason. It's very strange. Garrus is so bloodthirsty, I'm sure Rex would have a field day if he was here. Actually, Rex doesn't have too much to say if you bring him. It's mainly up to Shepard to smack Garrus with the newspaper and kind of get it into his head that you can't just go cowboy your way through life. I can't do this one. Which is fine because in the first game you're his um, superior. So he kind of looks up to you in your opinion anyway. Also because that's kind of Turian culture. They are kind of they're kind of conditioned to take orders and not question them whatsoever. And that's kind of Garrus's problem is he's the kind of guy where if you give him an order and he doesn't like it, he will contest you about it. Which is a good personality trait, but it's not a good Turian trait. Smack Garrus with the newspaper like a puppy or something, except for aforementioned puppy wants to murder people. Yeah, you just you just swat him with the newspaper every single time he gets a little bloodthirsty and teach him, hey, you can't just shoot people because you're frustrated. I understand you're frustrated, but you can't do that. That's not how we do things. Shepard. So you'd rather be a merc than help your people. I'm a fighter. It's what I do. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Aren't you at all worried about what will happen to the Krogan? What the hell do you want me to do about it, Shepard? I'm tired of sticking my ass on the line and getting nothing for it. So you're just giving up on your people? I gave up on fighting for a lost cause. I'm no hero, Shepard. Bottom line... Killing for credits simplifies things. You ever think about helping your people? I try not to. But there's a lot of Krogan mercs out there. I'm always running into them. Half the time I'm being paid to kill them. But that's just part of the job. You don't get to pick who your enemies are. Hmm. I th okay, we asked him about the genophage. I think if we ask him about family, he might have some updates on that. If he doesn't, I'll skip through the dialogue. You must have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? No. Now that I have my family's armor again, there's nothing left for me. Okay. And I don't know if he has any more dialogue under mercenary? How long have you been a merc? Ah. Long enough. I took my first contract right after I left my home system. It's good work, but doesn't kill you. I get the feeling you enjoy your work. Sure. You get to see the galaxy on someone else's credits, and most days end with a good fight. I've tried more organized fighting, private armies and such, but it gets too messy. I fight best on my own, or in very small groups. I don't like people relying on me, and I bloody well don't like relying on them. And yet you join Shepard's crew. That's interesting. So long, Rex. Shepard. Hey, Garrus. Commander, I... What can I do for you? What's up? Something bothering you? It's Saren. I'm starting to wonder whether we'll ever find him. 
He's always one step ahead of us, and he's got those damn Geth. We're getting close, Garrus. We'll find him. I wish I had your confidence. I just can't stand the thought of him getting away with everything he's done. I know you're doing everything you can, and if anyone can catch him, it's you, but... If there's anything else I can do to help, anything, just tell me what you want me to do, and I'll do it. I understand your concern, but we will find him. Just make sure you're ready to go when we do. Yes, ma'am. You can count on me. Thanks for hearing me out. I appreciate it. Can I ask you something, Commander? Mm-hmm. What is it? Are you worried that the Council might be protecting Saren? I mean, they were really dragging their heels before. What if we find him, bring him back to the Citadel, and they refuse to act? I'm not sure, because I don't think the Council is protecting him. I think the Council is reluctant to accept that Saren is the monster that we are accusing him of. But I don't think they're protecting him. Because if they were protecting him, they would have dragged their heels even more than they already were, revoking his spectre status. Like, they would have found excuses and reasons to keep that in place, or they would have... They would have done far less than they have done. The fact that they stripped him of his spectre status, which removes him from resources that he needs, and then essentially sicked shepherd on him that doesn't sound to me like they're protecting him i get what garris is saying and i understand his concern but in this case i don't think that's what's going on just because the logic doesn't line up for me i get the feeling this isn't a question speak your mind garris well maybe we shouldn't give them the chance commander in my opinion saren's too dangerous to be kept alive too much could happen he could escape or the council might let him go if we find him when we find him I say we make sure we stop him permanently. So, Garrus, Garrus is anxious. <laughs> He's stressed out. If Saren won't listen to reason, if he forces my hand, I'll kill him in a heartbeat. But only if it's absolutely necessary. But what's the point in keeping him alive? It just gives him an opportunity to escape or convince the Council to listen to him. And what about the Geth? They might try to free him. We know more about Saren's plans than anyone, but what do we really know? If we just kill him, we lose the chance to find out. Yeah, I see your point. Do you really think there's more to know, other than the fact that he's a raving lunatic? Maybe, maybe not, but it's not a chance I'm willing to take. Yes, ma'am. Gotta grab the newspaper. No, I think this time he actually does have a point. Like, I kind of understand. He's just anxious and stressed out. Because it's not so much that he's not talking about the fact that, oh, we should um, mow down anyone that stands between us and getting Saren. His concern is once we actually get Saren, that something is going to go wrong and that the galaxy will put be put into um, danger. That is his concern in this matter. It's not so much the disregard for civilians or any of that. Like, I feel that's more of a valid concern. And that's why I feel like Shepard doesn't shoot him down. Uh, no pun intended. She hears him out and she actually let, reassures him and lets him know that if needs be, she will put down Saren. But she's also just kind to, she's just kind of trying to talk him down from that being the number one response. Because there's more to lose in not learning anything than there is just putting him down immediately. I don't know if he has anything more to say because we did get Dr. Hart for him. Commander. Good to see you. Okay, no, he doesn't have any more dialogue. I think we have to talk to him again later. But that's one of his, like, bloodthirsty conversations where I actually understand his concerns more than the others. Because I feel that is a valid concern. Okay, Noveria. Noveria is a small frozen terrestrial world, barely habitable by conventional definitions. It is privately chartered by the Noveria Development Corporation, whose lease who lease out labs to perform research too dangerous or controversial to be performed elsewhere. Given a various unique situation, it is the source of many wild conspiracy theories. Colony Foundation 2163, population 361,400. Approach control, this is the SSV Normandy, requesting a vector and a berth. Normandy, your arrival was not scheduled. Our defense grid is armed and tracking you. State your business. 
Citadel business. We got a Council Spectre aboard. Landing access granted, Normandy. Be advised, we will be confirming identification on arrival. If confirmation cannot be established, your vessel will be impounded. What a fun bunch. I think I'll take my next leave here. Okay. That's far enough. We're not here to cause problems. This is an unscheduled arrival. I need your credentials. I'm a Spectre. My name is Shepard. Load of horse crap, ma'am. We will need to confirm that. Also, I must advise you that firearms are not permitted on Ovaria. Sergeant Sterling, secure their weapons. Citadel authority supersedes yours. Stand down. Their house, their rules. If you think this is best, Commander. Captain Matsuo, stand down! We confirmed their identity. Spectres are authorized to carry weapons here, Captain. You may proceed, Spectre. I hope the rest of your visit will be less confrontational. Parasini-san will meet you upstairs. Behave yourself. Yay! Okay. Nobody got to shoot anyone, that's good. What's your problem? Get out of here. Okay. Weapons detectors, don't mind the alarms. I am Gianna Parasini, assistant to Administrator Analeas. We apologize for the incident in the docking bay. I appreciate your help. You're welcome. You understand our security chief was only doing her job. One of my duties is orientation of new arrivals. Do you have any questions? Pretty heavy security for such a small port. The executive board does everything in its power to protect the privacy of our client corporations. Yeah, um... I'm Commander Shepard. Things seem to happen when I show up. I can't have my investigation hampered. Tread lightly. The board can bury you in litigation. You'd need an Asari lawyer to see the case through. No, no, not more paperwork. Has anyone unusual passed through here recently? Unusual? An Asari matriarch passed through a few days ago. Lady Benezia. Benezia? She is here? Can I speak with her? Benezia left for the Peak 15 research complex days ago. To the best of my knowledge, she's still there. Could you tell me how to get there? You'll need to ask Administrator Analeas for clearance to leave this port. Where can I find the Administrator? His office is on the main level, left at the top of the elevator. Understood. Can we go in now? Of course. If you need any help, you can ask me at the Administrator's office. She is here. I can't believe it. I imagine you want to talk to me, Shepard. About my mother. See, this is why... I don't know why they... They should almost make it mandatory to get Liara first and then do Noveria. Because it's very easy to miss out on like all the extra detail you get if you bring Liara with you. No, we don't. I trust you, Liara. You may not be military, but you're a part of my crew. Thank you, Shepard. That means a great deal to me. Welcome to Port Hanshan the galaxy's most respected site for independent scientific research and development. For your own safety and to protect the privacy of others, you are required to obey any directions given by our security personnel. If you have questions or concerns, our friendly administrative staff is always available. Thank you and enjoy your stay. Okay. Hello, Parasini, again. How can I help you? <laughs> Garris just walks away. <laughs> How large are the facilities here? We have 17 research complexes built into the mountains. Each is a self-sufficient facility housing a staff of hundreds. Tell me about the companies that work on Novaria. Over 250 high-tech firms rent our labs. Major shareholders include Elanis Risk Control Services, Binary Helix, and Synthetic Insights Limited. Your guards work for ERCS, don't they? The executive board gets a discount on facility security. Ilanis also develops lethal and non-lethal weapons. Haven't I seen synthetic insights in the news lately? They're one of only four corporations licensed by the Citadel Council to develop artificial intelligence. They attract many protests. No agitators have ever breached our security. That's why they invest heavily here. Okay. 
I'd like to speak to Analeas. One moment, please. Mr. Analeas? Yes, what, what? Commander Shepard is asking to see you, sir. Right, fine, come in. He sounds pleasant. Oh, wait, these guys have things to say. What do you guys think? Do not be fooled by these civilized surroundings. This is a place of secrets and lies. And Garrus? Corporations here hire their own private security forces. It makes it easier for them to break the laws that way. I can't tell if that's something that Garrus would approve of or something he would find frustrating. Hello. You will excuse me if I don't stand up. I have no time to entertain colonial rubes. Uh, not a good start. I see you looked up my service record. Only a fool enters negotiation without knowledge of the other party's tendencies. This greeting is a courtesy. I will only cooperate as required by the executive board. Businesses come here to avoid the second guessing of galactic law. Are you telling me you have no safety protocols? Don't be ridiculous. Do you think a for-profit company would take no precautions against loss of life and material? Project leads have the final say here, not meddlesome politicians. Hmm. I can see that going either way, because... Yeah, sure, no meddlesome politicians, but on the other hand, you, you, you did use the term for-profit. Anyway, let's, let's, <laughs> let's... Instead of poking him about his operation here, let's actually get the info we need. Do you do business with Saren? Agent Saren? One of your Spectre compatriots? He is a major investor in Binary Helix Corporation, which is one of Novaria's backers. Mm, I mean, it's a good question. He's not going to answer it, but it's a good question. Is Binary Helix developing weapons for him? It's possible, given his interests. What our clients do in their labs is their business. Yeah, that's a non-answer. I've heard an Asari matriarch is here. Benezia? She arrived a few days ago, accompanied by a personal escort and some cargo. She's up at peak 15. What can you tell me about her cargo? Large, heavy, and sealed. It passed weapon screening. Beyond that, it is not our concern. What do you mean, personal escort? The phrase is self-explanatory. Bodyguards attending to the safety of her person, mainly Asari commandos. Commandos? You didn't think that odd? They followed all our regulations. I had no reason to forbid Lady Benezia from taking them. <laughs> Garrus is like, are you seeing this shit? I'd like to see her. Immediately. I'm afraid that you cannot. Peak 15 is a private facility in the Scotty Mountains. Regardless, there is a blizzard in the area. Shuttles are grounded and surface access has been cut off. D so we drive. <laughs> Just the squad mates. This is the most terrifying thing Shepard can say in their presence. Surface access, you say? Cut off, I said. The roads are not suitable for travel. Don't make an issue of this, Shepard. Forget him, Commander. If he won't help us, I'm sure someone else here will. Calm down, Garrus. What brought her out here? If I knew, I wouldn't be at liberty to say. She came here as Agent Saren's executor. She is here on business for Binary Helix. There were issues at Peak 15 that required Saren's attention. Hmm. Okay, and I've asked everything Back else. to my other questions. Every minute of my time you waste costs the company 12 credits. I will keep a running tally. Sure, bill me. I have no more questions at this time. Good. I received a dozen urgent messages while you dithered about. Sure, sure. Whatever. Mr. Analeas isn't the only one with a pass to leave Hanchan. Hello? You've never worked in the corporate world, have you, Commander? You can't bludgeon through bureaucracy. So it would seem. I need an alternative. Talk to Lorik Keen. You should be able to find him at the hotel bar. Can't say more. Not within earshot of Mr. Analeas. You said I should talk to Lorik Keen? Mr. Analeas isn't the only one with a pass to leave Hanchan. Keen spends his days at the hotel since his office was closed. I've taken up enough of your time. Not at all, Spectre. This is my job, after all. Okay, so we speak to Lorik Keen. Let's talk to Lorik. I like Lorik Keen. Lorik Keen is another one of those NPCs that have... He has a very small role in the story at, as, at large, and yet somehow has quite a few fans in the fandom as well. I, I don't know, the Torians tend to be very popular in the fandom, but I remember when this game first came out, um, I think the Salarians had just as many fangirls as the Torians, so it's just funny to me that it seems as time has gone by, 
people tend to be bigger fans of the Turians than they were of the Salarians when the game first came out. Anyway, people like Lorik. Afternoon. Sit down, have a drink. What can I do for you? Uh, here we go. Are you Lorik Keen? I heard you might be able to help me. You are the Spectre that just arrived, are you not? What can an old Turian like me possibly help you with? <laughs> Spectre? Me? <laughs> I'm trying to find a way into the garage. I have places to go. You need a pass. How fortuitous. I'm the manager of the local Synthetic Insights office. For the moment, at least. Mr. Analeas closed my office. He claims to be investigating reports of my corruption. The administrator is an interesting man. He's become quite wealthy since he took direct control of rents. <laughs> I sense a connection there. Indeed. I acquired evidence of Analeas's actions. His hired goons are ransacking my office to find it. I suspect your goal lies outside this port. Mr. Analeas would be disinclined to let you wander. If you recover the evidence from my office, I will give you my garage pass, as well as a sum of credits. Why didn't Analeas cancel your pass clearance? Why should he? There's nothing outside but snow and hungry Nathak. What's a Nathak? I don't actually know that. I'll have to look that up. I don't like it when I hear things about this, this universe that I don't know. How did you get a pass? I'm a manager. Most executives on Novaria are free to come and go as they will. You have a plan? I do. However, there is one other... What is that charming human expression? Fly in the lotion? Close enough. Violence against Mr. Analeas' thugs may be necessary. He has members of Han Shan's security team searching my offices. He's paying them under the table. Miss Matsuo is unaware of their outside employment. Hmm. No, we'll, we'll figure something out. D don't worry about it. I'll focus on trying to get your evidence. If I'm lucky, I won't have to fight anyone. Excellent. Here is my pass into our offices. It will activate the elevator. The evidence is on my office computer. This OSD contains an encryption key to access it. Slide it into the drive and it will auto-execute. Oh, and do try to keep blood stains off the carpets, would you? No promises. Yes, with this guy. This guy's uh, dialogue is actually quite interesting. Don't hang up. Elder brother? It's me. I'm on Navaria now. I can't talk long. This call is costing 10 credits a minute. It's real time from the Traverse. Did you think it would be cheap? I need some information. There's an issue here with synthetic insights. The manager, Laura Keane, he got caught with his toes wet. The office is closed by Hanshin's administrator. Uh, I need you to see what you can find out about him. Are you ready for his name? Ronadril, Gan, Swa, Folsum, Karatin, Nar, EAD, Bell, and Elias. No, that's the administrator. The Hanshin administrator. Well, think about it. A Turian wouldn't risk getting his office closed. They don't compromise their team. That's drilled into the boot camp. I think the administrator is using this keen fella to draw flies from his own clutch. Of course I could look it up myself. But do you think I'm likely to get any unfiltered data through Novaria's own network? That, and it would take forever for any out-system search results to get back here. Thank you, Elder Brother. I have to go. Yes, I'll speak to you soon. That conversation is actually extremely interesting in terms of Salarian lore because not only do you I think that's the first time you learn about how Salarian name structures work because we've been speaking to Analeas but that's kind of just the given name um, Salarians have names that identify which planet they were born on which city of the planet they were born on oops my phone again I'm gonna have to turn that off uh, what, what city on the planet they were bo born on, what, d what district of the city, their planet they were born on, as well as what family they're part of. It's like extremely hyper specific. And I think that's the first time you hear about it in game. And it also kind of shows you the familial bonds that the Salarians tend to have. Because he's had to, he's referring to his older brother and he refers to him specifically as elder brother. So that's interesting as well. And the other thing that's interesting is he also talks about the, how the extranet works, or in this case the internet. And 
the, you know, it kind of gives a be better concept of both the internet and extranet and how that works in Mass Effect as well. So even though that's just a small piece of dialogue that you catch walking past, it gives you so much detail about the world and its lore as a whole. But before we go up to uh, Synthetic Insights, I want to talk to another character. I think that's the way to Synthetic Insights. Yes, it is, because that's the elevator that takes you there. There's another character here that I really like. I don't know why I like this NPC so much, but I I think it's because it's a it's a kind of Turian you don't really see a lot of in these games. And there he is, Lily Hyrex. I like this guy a lot. Spectre, right? Yeah, that's me. I used to be a military tech. Except for my ego's people, everyone's too corporate here. They just sit around sipping expensive water. So what can I do for you today? Mmm, <laughs> he's like a bartender. You seem like you have an ear to the ground. What's happening around here? There's the problems up on Peak 15. Synthetics Insights was shut down by Analeus. And a matriarch came through. Mm. Oh, here we go. We can actually ask him about everything. Do you know where that matriarch is now? You looking for her? She took a shuttle to Peak 15 before we lost contact. I think I like this guy because I, I like his accent. What sort of problems are there at Peak 15? Don't know. There's a blizzard up there, but we've had those before. Never cut the satellite uplinks before. Fifteen's always had a lousy reputation. Nobody talks about what they do there. And everyone sent up comes back a little quieter. What was that about synthetic insights? Scuttlebutt says Lord Keen was on the take. Zainalea shut down SI's offices. Quiet like, so no off-world lawyers come in on it. What do you do here? I'm the chief mechanic for him. <laughs> Look at him smile. Just call me Lee. Humans have a problem saying my full name. Got a team of 12 under me, keeping the shuttles coming and going. When the Turian's mandibles flare like that, that's that's how they smile. Uh, yes, here we go. How can I get into the garage? You need a pass. You can get one from Analeas or the managers. If you can polish enough gizzard. <laughs> you have one, right? <laughs> Maybe you could let me borrow yours? Sure. If I wanted to lose my job and get sued into the next spiral arm, security tracks card use. Yeah, fair enough. I have to go. You need anything? I'll be here. I think when I played this originally on the PS3, um, Lee does have clan markings on his face, but his clan markings color is so close to his skin tone that for a very long time I thought he wasn't wearing clan markings and that's like super interesting for cultural reasons because that kind of designates certain personality traits but when I played the legendary edition I saw oh he does actually have clan markings they're just so subtle that it's it's easy to miss them but Lee is like the only likable person on this entire base I mean Passini that's her name right Pasini. Pasini isn't that bad either. But Lee is like the one guy who's just straightforward. And he's not like shady. He's not scummy. He's just like the janitor. <laughs> Hello. Freeze! Hanshan security. This office is sealed. I don't know if saying Keen let me in would be a smart idea considering he was kicked out. <laughs> or what? What are you doing in these offices? The administrator's orders. Laura Oops. Keen is under investigation. Sorry about that. You're here illegally. Analeas is paying you to shake this place down. Does Captain Matsuo know you're here? Hey, I'm not the one who wants Keen. Analeas has a Varen up his ass about this guy. How about this? You pretend you didn't see us, we'll pretend we didn't see you. And then we end up shooting anyway, so I'm not entirely sure what that does. I don't know if it lessens the amount of people you fight. Or if it's bugged or what's going on. I also realized um, the chat isn't as many people as there usually is. But I realized a lot of people are probably playing Baldur's Gate. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3, I mean. 
We downloaded the evidence from Norik's computer. Hello. I don't think you're supposed to be in here, Shepard. I don't think you're supposed to be in here either. You have me at a disadvantage, miss. Oh, now you're gonna show some respect? I'm Sergeant Kyra Sterling, Ilanis Risk Control Services. Analeas would throw you off world for what you did here. I won't. You know what we did to cop killers on my world? Your men are dirty, Sergeant. You're here off duty breaking the law for bribe money. <laughs> yeah, what he said. I didn't want to fight them. They fired first. Ah! Well, I don't need a gun to rip you to pieces. Uh, thank you. My knee-jerk response is always like, when I see these few people in chat and stuff, my thinking is always, okay, well, what have I done in terms of... How can I put it? Not like, what did I do? Commander, oh, hello. there have been reports of noise from the Synthetic Insights office. Would you know anything about it? No! Oh. I don't know. It's probably Analeas's thugs ripping the place apart. Smart ass, huh? <laughs> That's fine. I can work with that. Meet me at the hotel for a drink before you talk to Keen. I'll be waiting. Okay. Uh, like I was saying, it's not that I think like, oh, I've done something wrong. My thinking is like something has obviously changed so that not as many people show up and then i always think is it something that i might have done which has affected that like did i choose a wrong time of day or did i choose a wrong day of the week but in this case i think it's entirely because Baldur's gate 3 came out <laughs> hello allow me to reintroduce myself parasini novaria internal affairs <laughs> why is an internal affairs agent here the executive board knows about Analeas's corruption. I've been undercover for six months. I want you to convince Keen to testify before the board. With his evidence, this planet can run profitably again. I like Parasini a lot. Especially, I think the voice actress did a great job where she has like the corporate voice up until this point, And then when you speak to her here, she has a much more natural way of speaking. And I think that's such a subtle little change, but I really appreciate it. And it makes me really like this character a lot more. You work for Analeas. Can't you just take his records? <laughs> He's a crook, not a moron. He doesn't keep logs on his computer saying, this month I stole three million credits. Keen's testimony and records are everything I need to prove Analeas' guilt in one package. Mm. Yeah. Why don't you ask Keen directly? I'm Analeas' secretary. You'd think he'd believe me? That he'd meet me in some dark alley with his evidence? Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I thought corruption was the rule on Novaria. The rule is don't rock the boat. Self-interest is tolerated if it doesn't interfere with business. Analeas is driving customers away. Ah, uh, okay, I see. Sadly... The fact that this is all wrapped up in profits makes it far more believable that she's telling the truth than anything else she said. I do still need his pass, though. I need Keen's garage pass to complete my mission. You help my investigation, I'll provide whatever you need. Favor for a favor. Analeas is dirty. It might be best to help her. Look, Shepard, I don't like this either. You specters play fast and loose with the law. That's bad for business. <laughs> Pay me. <laughs> What's happening up on peak 15? Before the weather closed in, Hanchan received a Code Omega signal from him. Code Omega means a terminal breach of safety protocols. No one goes up until the crew sends an all clear. Mm, that all you know? Oh, what if there's no... Oh, these are both good questions. Let's start with this one. That doesn't tell me much. That's all I've got. No one knows what's going on up there. And if the crew never sends an all-clear? The executive board votes whether or not to destroy the facility. One antimatter warhead from the battle stations vaporizes all contaminants. So there is your nuking it from orbit, because it's the only way to be sure. How can I get to peak 15? The shuttles are down, so you'd have to drive up. If you get keen to testify, I'll get into the garage. <laughs> Pay me. <laughs> I don't know why that abuses me so much. Um... Yeah, Benezia. Do you know why the Matriarch is here? Something to do with Peak 15. She arrived after we received their Code Omega, automated warning of a containment breach. She came with an escort of Asari commandos. They took the last shuttle up to Peak 15 with a load of crates. 
Uh, we did ask this before, and she said she didn't know. Oh no, we asked Analeas, but maybe she'd have a better idea. Do you know what she had in the crates? No idea. The commandos wouldn't let anyone near them. They seemed heavy, though. Okay, no, she doesn't. Uh, that's what we can ask there. Yep, I'll help you. I don't see why not. It's kind of a everybody wins situation, right? All right. I'll talk to Keen and see if I can convince him. Thank you. You know where I work. Come talk to me once you know if he'll play ball. Okay. And we speak to... Keen. I keep seeing the name Lorik Keen and I just like glancing at it and I keep thinking it says Lord Keen. Always a pleasure, Spectre. Any news on that matter I asked you to look into? Uh, yeah, about... Oh, wait, I can ask her... I can ask him about Benezia. Did I ask... Did you see an Asari matriarch recently? Yes, she caused quite a stir. It's not every day a matriarch arrives with a guard detail of commandos. Yeah, I didn't ask him about this earlier. Is it so unusual to see a matriarch? They rarely venture beyond Asari space. To see such an esteemed figure is surprising. Lady Benezia was also dressed for her role. An Asari in a pinstripe suit set tongues wagging among the younger male employees, so to speak. Young males have an unhealthy obsession with my species. <clears throat> I mean, she's not wrong. Armed commandos were allowed on Novaria? I don't know if they were disarmed. Of course, one can't confiscate biotic powers. Saren, and by extension, Benezia, is an important person. By that I mean an investor who might sell stock, if denied. Yeah. Once again, profits. Do you know why Benezia is here? She claimed to be Saren's assistant, here to get a certain project back on track. I suspect she meant Peak 15. I have a different question. Humans are full of questions. <laughs> I should write a book about it while I have the time to spare. Sweats and shamefully looks away. It's a surprisingly self-aware statement too, considering that the Asari were designed by Bioware to be, like, sexy. Like, that, w that was by design. Uh, I, have the, I have the art book and it's quite interesting what they say, like how they made certain decisions about their overall look, I guess you could say. I don't know if I asked him about this. I need to get up to peak 15. Indeed. That might be difficult. Ah. A terrible storm has been unleashed up there. Yeah, I didn't ask him about this. I don't know if I had an opportunity to ask him. Are you referring to the blizzard? Of course. What else would I be referring to? <laughs> yeah, he's double talking me. I heard there was an accident. There have been unseemly rumors circulating along the lines of ancient evil and plague from distant suns. <laughs> Amusing, no? Someone watches too many bad horror vids. Oh, I say goodbye, that's all. I should let you go. Let me go. Do humans consider conversation a form of imprisonment? That would explain why so few are willing to sit and talk. <laughs> You're weird, Keen. Always a pleasure, Spectre. Any news on that matter I asked you to look into? Anyway, back, back to the plot. I finished the job, but an internal affairs investigator contacted me. She wants you to testify against Enelaus. Now that you have my property, you want to dictate how I use it. I have no interest in a public spectacle. Come on! Everyone on this station is chafing under Enelaus's extortion. You might end up a hero. My employers rely on the goodwill of the executive board to work here. The board is investigating Enelaus. They'll be more angry at him than at you. All right. It is obvious that I cannot dissuade you. Very well, I will testify. Make whatever arrangements you need with your contact, I will wait here. He's not keen on it! <laughs> do Turians hatch from eggs? No, they do not. Turians give live birth. Salarians hatch from eggs. But Turians, uh, despite being birds, uh, they actually give birth to live young. Yes, that is information I just had off the top of my head and didn't have to look up. Spectre, have you given any more consideration to my offer? Yes. It took some persuasion, but Keen has agreed to testify. <sighs> That's a world of stress off my back. 
I'll take the evidence for safe transport. <laughs> I didn't think you'd help me, being a specter and all. I guess some of you can be all right. So, how about getting me into the garage? While you were working on Keen, I got you a garage pass. Be careful up there. I have an arrest to make. Wish I had time to change into something easy to move in. I hate skirts. This is an outrage. I'll see that you never work in this sector again. Yeah, yeah, get a move on. You, Shepard! I demand you place this bitch under arrest! You have the right to remain silent. I wish to God you'd exercise it. See you around the galaxy, Commander. I owe you a beer. Yay. <laughs> I like Parasini, she's great. Oops. Characters, rubber band. Hello. I heard the Administrator's been arrested. Any chance you had something to do with that? He was corrupt. <laughs> Most people here are. I wish you could take them all down. So what can I do for you today? Okay, nothing else to say. I have to go. You need anything? I'll be here. Okay, let's save before we go into the garage. Hello. Access to the garage is restricted. <laughs> she sounds way too shy to be a guard. I have authorization. Excuse me. Yes, that's genuine. Drive safely. The weather's supposed to be pretty bad out in the Alutsk Valley. Thank you. And we have Gif. Okay. Let's see, these are what the matriarch had in the crates. Yep. But we suspected as much. Oh, great. And the signal's jammed. That's fantastic. The... Where are these things? Fan out and secure the area. No one gets in or out. Okay, great. Hello. You showed up in time. What did you do here, Commander? <laughs> Me? Me? I'm the victim here. The Geth attacked us. Geth, you expect me to... Where did they come from? If I were to guess, the Matriarch packed them in the shipping container she arrived with. I don't believe that. We did thorough scans of those. There were no power sources, no element zero masses. If Benezia Sama's containers were packed with these things, there are many more out there. I need numbers, Captain. A dozen? A hundred? Dozens, at least. They're machines. You could pack them tightly. I must report to the executive board. If word gets out about loose geth, there may be an investor panic. <laughs> Once again, profits! Interestingly enough, she calls her Benezia Sama. Now, my guess is that she's actually speaking Japanese, and the Universal Translator is just translating it into English. I don't think she's actually speaking English. Here we go. Okay, Codex. See, we've... That's secondary. Okay, so what haven't we done that's interesting? Thresher moths are subterranean carnivores that spend their entire lives eating or searching for something to eat. Threshers reproduce via spores that can lie dormant for millennia, yet are robust enough to survive prolonged periods in deep space and atmospheric re-entry. As a result, thresher spores appear on many worlds, spread by previous generations of space travelers. The body of a thresher never entirely leaves the ground. Only the head and tentacles erupt from the earth to attack. In addition to physical attacks, threshers have the ability to project toxic chemicals and emit bursts of infrasound as a shockwave weapon. The Alliance first encountered threshers on the colony of Akuz in 2177. After contact was lost with the Pioneer team, Marine units were deployed to investigate. The shore parties were set upon by hungry threshers, and nearly the entire assault force was killed. Alliance forces recommend engaging threshers with vehicle-mounted heavy weapons. I didn't actually know a coos was the first contact humanity had with thresher moles. That I did not know. Citadel space is an unofficial term referring to any region of space controlled by a species that acknowledges the authority of the Citadel Council. At first glance, it appears this territory encompasses most of the galaxy. In reality, however, less than 1% of the stars have been explored. 
Even Mass Effect FTL drive is slow relative to the volume of the galaxy. Empty space and systems without suitable drive discharge sites are barriers to exploration. Only the mass relays allow ships to jump hundreds of light years in an instant, the key to expanding across an otherwise impassable galaxy. Whenever a new relay is activated, the destination system is rapidly developed. From that hub, FTL drive is used to expand to nearby star clusters. The result is a number of densely developed clusters, thinly spread across the vast expanse of space, connected by the mass relay network. Um, wouldn't the Universal Translator translate Benezia Sama to Lady Benezia? Maybe. I just think it's a very strange thing because she's speaking English so straightforwardly. So the use of honorifics like that when she's speaking straightforward English just seems very out of place to me. That's why I wonder if she's not actually speaking Japanese. Faster than okay, we did that, we did that. Here we go. Ship mobility dominates space combat. The primary objective is to align the mass accelerator along the bow with the opposing vessel's broadside. Battles typically play out as artillery duels, fought at ranges measured in thousands of kilometers. Though assaults through defended mass relays often occur at knife fight ranges, as close as a few dozen kilometers. Most ship-to-ship -ship engagements are skirmishes between patrol vessels of cruiser weight and below with dreadnoughts and carriers only deployed in full-scale fleet actions. Battles in open space are short and often inconclusive, as the weaker opponent typically disengages. Once a ship enters FTL flight, the combat is effectively over. There are no sensors capable of tracking them or weapons capable of damaging them. The only way to guarantee an enemy will stand and fight is to attack a location they have a vested interest in, such as a settled world or a strategically important mass relay. Interesting. The system's alliance is... Uh, it was probably Earth, yeah. The home world and capital of humanity is entering a new golden age. The resource wealth of a dozen settled colonies and a hundred industrial outposts flows back to Earth, fueling great works of industry, commerce, and art. The great cities are greening as arcology skyscrapers and telecommuting allow more efficient use of land. Earth is still divided among nation states, though all are affiliated beneath the overarching banner of the system's alliance. While every human enjoys a longer and better life than ever, the gap between rich and poor widens daily. Advanced nations have eliminated most genetic disease and pollution. Less fortunate regions have not progressed beyond 20th century technology and are often smog-choked overpopulated slums. Sea levels have risen two meters in the last 200 years, and violent weather is common due to environmental damage inflicted during the late 21st century. The past few decades, however, have seen significant improvement due to recent technological advances. Uh, there are between two and four hundred billion stars in the galaxy, and less than one percent of them have ever been visited or had their systems properly surveyed. Humanity's early expansion into the Attican Traverse was haphazard, a desperate race to claim habitable planets where populations can be economically settled. Ignored in the wake of this land grab were thousands of less hospitable worlds, each potentially rich with industrial resources. The wealth of entire solar systems lies untapped, waiting for corporate survey teams or independent pioneers to discover and exploit them. However, this is not an easy task. In addition to the environmental hazards, the fact that uncharted worlds are largely ignored makes them popular bases for criminals, revolutionaries, cults, and others who wish to remain unnoticed by galactic society. An artificial intelligence is a self-aware computing system capable of learning and independent decision-making. Creation of a conscious AI requires adaptive code a slow, expensive education, and a specialized quantum computer called a blue box. An AI cannot be transmitted across a communication channel or computer network. Without its blue box, an AI is no more than data files. Loading these files into a new blue box will create a new personality, 
as variations in the quantum hardware and runtime results create unpredictable variations. The Geths serve as a cautionary tale against the dangers of rogue AI, and in Citadel space, they are technically illegal. Advocacy groups argue, however, that an AI is a living, conscious entity, deserving the same rights as organics. They argue that continued use of the term artificial is institutionalized racism on the part of organic life. The term synthetic is considered the politically correct alternative. I think that's splitting here is because artificial and synthetic are basically synonyms for each other. So like, what's the point? Because of their long lifespan, Asari tend to have a long view not common to other races. When they encounter a new species or situation, the Asari are more comfortable with an extended period of passive observation and study than immediate action. They are unfazed that some of their investments or decisions may not pay off for decades or centuries. Matriarchs, matriarchs can seem to make incomprehensible decisions, but their insight is evident when their carefully laid plans come to fruition. In interstellar relations, this long view manifests an unspoken policy of centrism. The Asari instinctively seek to maintain stable balances of economy, polit political and military power. Traditionally, Asari spread their influences through cultural domination and intellectual superiority. They invite new species of advanced development to join the galactic community, knowing that their ideals and beliefs will inevitably influence the existing culture. Yeah, that kind of sounds... That checks out. They're, they're like nice and diplomatic, but yeah, it's, it's the long game assimilation into their culture. Asari came late to the concept of world government. For centuries, their homeworld of Thessia was dotted with loose confederacies of great republican cities. The closest earthly equivalent would be the ancient Mediterranean city-states. Since the Asari culture values consensus and accommodation, there was little impetus, impetus, sorry, there was little impetus to form larger principalities. Rather than hoard resources, the Asari bartered freely, rather than attack one another over differing philosophies. They sought to understand one another. Only, the information age, only in the information age did the city-states grow close. Communication over internet evolved into an electronic democracy. Asari have no politicians or elections, but a freewheeling, all-inclusive legisla legislator. Sorry, some of, these na some of these words, I've heard them, but I've never read them. Uh, that citizens can participate in at will. Policy debates take place at, hours, at all hours of the day. In official chat rooms and forums, moderated by specially programmed virtual intelligences. All aspects of policy are open to plebiscite at any time. In any given debate, the Asari tend to lend the most credence to the opinions of of any matriarchs present, nearly always deferring to the experience of these millennia old wise women. Achieving consensus through public debate may take too long in a crisis. In cases where prompt decisive action is required, the Asari defer to the wisdom of local matriarchs. So basically, the Asari are ruled by Reddit. <laughs> Yeah, you do it. sorry, you're governed by Reddit. <laughs> and like, the person who has the final say are the mods. <laughs> and yet somehow it sounds far less chaotic. <laughs> That's amazing, I did not know that. That's hilarious. Uh, and lastly, religion. <laughs> it's literally Reddit. <laughs> uh, religion. Uh, the pantheistic mainstream Asari religion is Siari, which translates roughly as all is one. The faithful agree on certain core truths. The universe is a consciousness, every life within it is an aspect of the greater whole, and death is a merging of one spiritual energy back into the greater universal consciousness. Oh, so it's like Alan Watts. Um, I'm actually cool with that. I, I like I like Alan Watts's um, philosophies a lot. I'm a big fan of Alan Watts. Uh, anyway, uh, Siaris don't specifically believe in reincarnation. They believe that spiritual energy returned to the universal consciousness upon death will eventually be used to fill new mortal vessels. 
Siari became popular after the Asari left their homeworld and discovered the ability to meld with nearly any form of life. This ability is seen as proof that all life is fundamentally similar. Siari priestesses see their role as promoting unity between the disparate shards of the universe's awareness. Before the rise of Siari pantheism, Asari religions were as diverse as their political opinions. So, not much in other words. Uh, the strongest survivor of those days is the monotheistic religion worshipping the goddess Athame. Like the Asari, the goddess cycles through the triple aspects of maiden, matron, and matriarch. So that is what we've got on the Asari thus far. And that is really interesting and I am really amused <laughs> that their government is, is essentially Reddit. That is the best thing I've learned today. <laughs> That's really funny. So how does this work? Does the post with the most upvotes become law? Literally, yes. Literally, that's what happens. Unless a mod comes in, which is a matriarch in this case, and says, no, actually, I don't agree with that. And then everybody upvotes uh, the matriarch, and then they go with what the matriarch says. <laughs> Man, a species of hot alien woman who's governed like Reddit. It's very modern. <laughs> it's every modern nerd's dream. <laughs> We voted on the proposal. Every Asari cell gets a big titty goth girlfriend. The proposal has received 12k upvotes and only 300 comments. The law is passed. Exactly. That's exactly how it works. It's like some blockchains. What gets majority vote becomes law? Yeah. We are the universe trying to understand itself. Yes, that's basically what Alan Watts said. Um, Alan Watts, I'm not going to go into a big philosophical discussion because I know not everyone's here for that, but I'm a big fan of Alan Watts' writings on philosophy and it's essentially exactly what the Asari say here, where uh, it's a lot of um, big picture thinking. In, it's very interesting because it's very big picture thinking while focusing on the small picture, but basically what it said here about the Asari religion, that's basically what Alan Watts' take is as well. Okay, so I'm going to save... It is 10 o'clock here. I think Valken is still streaming for another hour or two. So I can catch like the final, the final band for the, it's not a festival. What do you call it? See, this is why we need to end. My brain is, is already, it's done for the evening. It can't think words anymore, but that's it for me. So I hope you guys had fun. Smaller stream this time in terms of audience members, but that's okay. Hopefully people will catch it on the rewatch. I hope everybody's enjoying Baldur's Gate 3. And I saw somebody say um, Armored Core 6 also came out. So I'm guessing everybody's playing that over the weekend. Mostly Baldur's Gate though, I would imagine. So see you guys. Bye bye.